Is this guy here from YCG, your casual gamer. So it's time to build our trap from ground up. And we're gonna put it in relation with our basic life system that we created in another episode. That looks like this over here. And also we're gonna put it in relation with our camera shade that we created in our last episode. And this is what the program should look like at the end. So I sure strongly suggest that you go see the other two episodes uh, according to the simple life system and the camera shake first and after that when you reach inside the game you're going to be able to walk to the trap and get damage according and when you drop to zero you are dead so let's get to it okay let's start by doing the uh, trap real quick I'm going to drag in a cone it's pretty simple over here what I did is I grabbed a cone, uh, simple basic shape put it to 0 0.4 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 in scale and then press N to floor it with uh, level it with the ground and then out drag over here one two three four times like that and then I'm gonna control click each of them one by one control click so you have them all selected and then I'll drag again one two three four Six, maybe move in. Seven, eight, and nine. And there you go. Now it covers everything. So now to select them all, I'm gonna go back up over here. I'm gonna grab the second one for me because I I have another one somewhere. And then I'm gonna shift click the last one. Then inside the windows, we're gonna go inside Developer Tool and Merge Actors. Merge all. Select the folder you want to save it in, and let's call it Spike Trap. Like this. And there you go. Now save everything. Now the thing is, I'm going to delete this over here now that we have our trap. And if I drag this inside the scene right now, what's going to happen? The first thing you're going to notice is that if I start walking on them, I'm most likely gonna get my players stuck there because every single cone has their collision preset and if that's what you're looking for in the term of realistic feature that's fine but for me I want my player to be able to walk with ease out of the spike if ever he gets hit so it doesn't apply to my scenario so I'm gonna go inside the spike trap over here and as you can see, there's 200 primitive collisions, and I don't need that many. I'm going to go here and remove all the collision. At the same time, it's a lot more calculation for your system when you're rebuilding your geometry. So I'm just going to have one simple box instead. And just grab the edges, and maybe bring it a little lower so that at least you feel like you're walking on the spikes, not on top of them. Save, and that's it. You're done. Now your trap is made, let's just give it a nice material to it. I'm going to give it a rust. Whoop. Right here. And save. And now, uh, actually we don't need that to be there. Because we're going to build our trap now. Inside the blueprint, say he's into, we're going to right click and select a blueprint class and an actor. And let's call it trap-1. Save all and get inside the editor and let's build our trap. So first thing we're going to add is a static mesh. Whoops, not that. Sorry, static mesh. And let's call it trap body. There we go. And uh, the second thing we're going to add is going to be a box collision. That's going to be in charge of our AOE, or area of effect. Area of damage, if you want, like this. Compile and save. And that's it for the uh, trap body. Now, construction script, what we're going to be doing over here I'm not going to give it a property to my trap body in case you want to give it another one in the future. We're going to drag this out and here set static mesh. So that's what you use the uh, construction script for. You can set up every default 
features uh, that you want to uh, customize yourself. So over here, that's the original over here. And I'm going to select a new one. So promote to variable, call it new trap body. And that's going to allow anybody that grabs my program to set up the static mesh they want for the trap. Let's make sure that it's editable too, so that you can uh, edit it outside. And we're going to put it inside its own category called customizable. Customizable. There we go. That way it's easier this way. You put every variable that you want to be customizable here and everything that you don't want the player to touch or the graphic designer or wherever you send your program after here. And now let's build our program. So over here we don't need the actor event begin play. Well, we're going to need it, but just for the this. So now the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to cast from the event play, uh, begin play to my first person character. Cast to first person character. Get player character. And then promote to variable. And the reason I do this is because to keep your program clean, you just want this one variable to be dragged out or else every time I need my character I'm gonna to need to cast to my main character get for player character and then I can get my variable out let's say I want to get current HP then I can get it but it's gonna be so long to always cast to the main character if I do it once and call it set default if I learn how to write then every time I need the main character, instead of having to redo all this, I can just drag my property over here, get it, and that's it. I get my variable out. So let's put this inside the components because we're not going to be editing this. And now the event tick, we're going to leave it on the side for now. The first thing that's going to happen is going to be what? You want to have a relation between your character overlapping the area of effect. So what's going to happen right here, you're going to add an event on begin overlap and we're going to make another one on end overlap. Now the first thing that it's going to check is what is overlapping. In that scenario it's going to be your character. So there right here you, you drag the character and here on other actor you're going to make it equal. So if the, the object that's overlapping your damage intake is your character then you branch it to tr if true something is gonna happen and if false something is gonna happen too so main character over here that and then this over here keep it clean there we go so now what's gonna happen the event tick is gonna be firing every second to check what to check if your character is inside your area of effect. But how to check this? I'm going to create a boolean and call it is overlapping. Question mark. And don't put it to uh, editable too. We're going to put it inside the components because this is a variable that's going to change depending on where your player is at. Compile and save. So now from the event tick, this is going to be the question. It's going to check. Is the character overlapping? Old B, make a condition. And if, if yes, then the damage is going to happen. So now, if your character is overlapping, that means the condition over here is true. So you're going to need to set this to true. And if your character leaves the area of damage, then you want the damage to stop applying. And if you don't do that, if you don't check this off, then it's going to keep happening. And even if you're not on the spike trap, you're going to keep taking damage. And you don't want that. So let's grab this and put this here and set it to off. And now you're done over here with the area of damage. Now let's build a program. So if it's true, then we want to get our player character. First off, we're going to create a do once. And the reason we do that is because the event tick happens so fast 
I don't know if you remember in our previous episode, I, I think I calculated to 0 0.003 second every time the tick fires. So if I set up my damage over here and it happens every 0 0.003 second, my life is going to deplete so fast that I don't even have the time to notice that I'm being hit. That'll already be game over. So I, I put a do once so that when it fires, it only fires once and then I'm going to set a time to retrigger. So it's going to check. First off, it's going to grab the damage. So get current HP. And we're going to do a minus float by float. And here is where the damage is going to be. So if you want to, you can drag this out and we're going to do that and call it trap damage. Make it editable because you want to be able to choose how much damage you take and this is where the damage is going to happen and then to make sure it doesn't go under zero you're going to clamp the value to a float and make sure the minimum is zero and the maximum is your max HP. You could if you want to just to be sure you could drive over here and get max HP and just connect it to the max. That way if you change your max HP later in the game it's always going to keep in mind where your max HP is going to be. But since with a value going down and not going up then it's irrelevant to have any number here because it's always going to be subtracting and not additioning, not adding anything to it. So now that you have the calculation behind let's set the new value, the new current HP and just for testing purposes, just to make sure our program works, we're going to drag out a print string over here just so we get a feedback and we're going to drag the value over here to this and it's going to convert it like that. Now that the damage has been applied, let's see if our player is dead. So drag the my character again, get current HP, current HP and then make check if the same value we always check before minus if it's under 1. If it's under 1 then that means you're dead therefore we're gonna get the player character over here and just set current set current HP to 0 and then we can get player controller get player controller and apply camera shake. Camera shake. Play ca client camera shake. And just select the shake that we did in our last episode. If you don't have a shake, not a, not ob obligatory over here to have it, but just to have a nice effect of dying. And that's going to be the you are dead. You're dead condition. Like that. Now let's create your still alive condition. So here, you didn't die from the damage from the trap. So we're going to still get over here. We can just copy this over here. So the camera shake is going to happen. Because you, your player still gets damage. And then there's going to be a retriggerable delay. That if you want to, again, you can drag out and call it uh, damage tick. How much time does it take before you get hit again? And you can set it to editable, so you can choose the value over here. The default value for my damage, I'm going to set it to uh, 15. Uh, let's put it to 20, just to make it quick. And the tick, I'm going to put it to 1 second. So every 1 second, you're going to get damage. And now, you want this to re-trigger your uh, do once, because right now it's happening only once. And just to keep the program uh, clean, we're going to do a custom effect. Add custom event, custom event, sorry, and call it retrigger. Like that. Connect it to the reset. And then that means the, the event is going to be able to fire again. And to make and then you just have to call it over here. Call retrigger. And there you go. You're done on the living side. Still alive. There we go. It's always good to put a comment because if you come back to your program another day and you have no clue what you've done, like this is over here, we could call it damage intake. There we go. Just leave it like this. 
here you'd be conditioned if you're dead or alive and now let's go out of there and let's see if it works so now exit this we're gonna drag the trap out now we have to give it a trap body like you see over here everything in the customizable is there so we're gonna go get our prop and just drag it inside you can set it to your scene even make it less bigger less higher if you want to you can customize it the way you want put it to the floor whoops maybe like, like that and now to give it a material we're gonna go and set the trap body get back to material I forgot to put it as default but that's alright let's do that like this and now what's missing if I go inside the game now I'm not gonna get hit because the area of effect is too small over here it's only at the corner so we need to put it in the middle and then just cover the trap with it because that's going to be where your damage can happen here like this and like this and then let's put it a little bit lower just to make sure you don't get hit when you're floating over and that should do it save everything and get it inside your scene now you go over it you get damage you see your life going down and when it reaches zero you are dead now the damage won't apply anymore because your character is supposedly dead so hope you enjoyed this we just created our first trap what's nice with this after is uh, if you want to uh, drag it inside your level have the same preset it's just easy like this you can just drag it wherever you want and you have a simple spy trap and the next episode I want to do I want to cover a small UMG animation so just to uh, finish our trap damage when you get hit, just you have a little red that pops in your screen. That's a nice feature in Unreal Engine that you can easily do. And I'm going to cover that with you guys. So have a good day and see you next time.